Hello again, welcome back. Um, we've been working on this weather API library and so far we've uh, solved challenges one through five. Um, let's talk about challenge number six and I realize like actually challenge number six, we kind of already solved it. Um, it just asks you to add a unit on the end of the parameter here for your weather function. We've already done that. So um, let's take this video as an opportunity to, to look at the previous challenge and work through it. So um, you might have added more properties. I didn't add any more properties here, um, but I could I could add some more. You know, it would be kind of just the same process that we went through. But what I'd like to do is maybe display some more information. So I like this feels like property and the min and max temperature. And maybe I want to include those in my temperature display. Right? So I want it instead of saying after and maybe right underneath broken clouds or maybe right underneath the temperature, I want to have like feels like and have it say what the temperature is, right? So let's uh, let's do that. So um, let's see here. So I've got um, temp and then I got description. And this is where like temp right here is the temperature and description, this paragraph right here is this broken clouds, right? So that's where that shows up. So I need another element here where I can insert the, the feels like, or I could actually concatenate, like put them together into a single string and put it here, but I wouldn't be able to style it separately. So I need another element if I'm gonna be able to style them independently. So what I think I'll do is I'll add a new element here, I'll make it another paragraph, and I'll just give it an ID. Our app is simple enough where IDs work pretty good. So let's do, um, I'm gonna just say feels like, there we go, right? And then I put some comments in here to show you where the information is gonna end up, but this is starting to get long, so I think I'm gonna move these to the same line like this, right? And then you could put, you could put a comment here if you wanted. There we go, right? So I can put the feels like information here. And um, now I'll need a reference to this element by its ID name. So let's go to our code and I've got, um, you know, these lines right here that get the elements that exist. So maybe, maybe I'll put it underneath temp right here. So I'll, I'll change this to um, feels like, and then <clears throat> I put like EL on the end for element to remind me that this is a, a, a DOM element. And then I'll put the name feels like here. And this needs to be spelled exactly like our ID name up above. So, and actually, you know, I can select it and see it and it highlights. So I know they're spelled the same. Okay, great. So now I want to get the feels like element. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into my block here and I'll say, you know, um, feels like element inner HTML equals, um, Oops, it's going to be uh, data dot, and then we spelled it this way, feels underscore like, right? So let's give it a try. Let's see, what is 90210? Oh, feels like 52. Whoa, it's 60 degrees, but it feels like 52. Um, must be windy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to parse that, right? Maybe it's it's clear sky, so the light is coming through. It must be windy or something. I don't know. Anyway, so that's kind of working, right? And we can do the min and max temperature. So I'll leave that up to you to display those. Maybe I also, I think this would be cool. Like, I don't like using the same style that I have here. I want to give this a style that kind of reminds me more of the temperature up above, right? So I think what I'm going to do is give this a style. So if you want to style your elements, follow me. Um, I've given these all IDs and my app is small enough where IDs are, are going to work okay. Um, mostly for CSS elements, I prefer to use a class name. But in this case, since it's so simple and there's just a few elements, um, an ID name is going to be okay. So up here, I've got my broad style. So I added a style to the body tag. I styled the paragraph and the um, H1 tag. Um, 
but what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to add underneath here, I'm going to add a style for feels like. So this element, like normally it would get the style between these two, right? So it would get this the font family here, font size here, font weight here. And then here for these, it would get the margin, right? So it's still going to have all those styles. But what I think I'm going to do for feels like is say font size a little bit smaller. So let's do 0.75 EMs. And then let's say um, font weight of bold, right? So it'll be a little heavier like the, um, like the temperature, right? So let's try that again. Let's do a 90210. Oh, there we go. That doesn't look too bad. It's a little too small, I think, right? Let's do, um, let's do like, what if we did like 1M? Let's do 90210. Actually, yeah, I think that looks pretty good, right? So yeah, maybe 1M, because I guess this is like maybe one and a half M's, right? Or maybe two, and then these, this is 1M. I could see it maybe being a hair smaller or maybe removing a little bit of the margin and padding like the space here. I don't know, you, you play with it, right? So that's feels like maybe I should include the, um, maybe I should include uh, like a little message in front of it that says feels like, so we know what that number represents. Let's do that. So that could be a little complicated. I'm gonna change this. I, I wanna keep this paragraph here because that'll add this, it'll make it its own line, right? And so that's kind of good for me because the paragraph is a block, right? So so what we'll do is um, I'm gonna um, take this ID feels like off of here, right? And then I'm gonna add a span, right? And my span is gonna be the area where the feels like temperature shows up. Okay, so I've got the span here, and it'll. This is where the temperature is going to show up because I'm going to put the ID name on it, and then before the span, but inside the paragraph, I'm going to say feels like colon right, and then that way the temperature will show up here. Well, actually, I guess the bummer is like it's going to show up all the time. Hmm. Well, let's just let's just go for this now, right? And uh, we can fix that later. I'm going to do a 90210. And now we can see it says feels like 5236, right? Wow. That I, how can they get that accurate? You know, I think like feels like 52 degrees. You know, no one would ever say to you, hey, you know, it feels like it's 52.36 degrees outside. Um, anyway, so there, there we go, right? How do they, yeah, I'm just kind of curious how they came up with that number. But anyway, so that's looking pretty good. Could use a little more work, but we could do the same strategy with other properties. So you can give that a try and see what you come up with and you can redesign this and make it your own thing, right? Um, there's also just note that um, when we get the weather data, the Open Weather Map service provides to us a a property for the image. It doesn't give us the image itself. It just gives us a name for an image and you have to look up the images and you can make your own images and replace them. But the images represent each of the states of the weather. So there's an image for cloudy. There's an image for sunny. There's an image for rainy. There's an image for cloudy rains. There's an image for um, uh, fog, you know, um, and the image is in here. It's where is it? It's, I think it's in the weather object. So, or in the object that's in the array, the weather array. So I'm going to go to weather array. And there's an, a, a value here called icon. And this O1D is the name of the picture. I think they also give us an ID for the weather. So we could, I think you could use either one of these to generate a picture. So um, I'll show you that actually. Let's go there. Let's make a new window and go to openweathermap.org. And I'm going to go to their um, API. And we're currently using the um, current weather map, <clears throat> current weather data API. So I'll click on the API doc. Ooh, they've kind of improved this, right? You can see here's the API call at the top that we're using, right? 
Um, and, and then they give us these parameters that we can use. So we can do query, we can do API ID, mode, units, and language. Ooh, language might be a cool one to add here, right? Okay. Um, and then they give us some examples of API calls. So we can get a city by the ID name, we can get um, city by geographic coordinates, so you can apply the latitude and longitude and get the weather at that location. Um, you can uh, provide the zip code, which is what we're doing. Um, and then it says call weather data from several cities. So you can also include a list of cities and it'll give you all of them. I think that's why they have the array object here. So if it returned multiple cities, the data would be in an array. Though I don't know what they do with the data up here. Maybe the whole thing changes. I don't know. Um, I think this could be improved, right? So I think, and I think you could be the one to improve it. Um, so we can get cities in a circle. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling down here, bulk download. Oh yeah, weather field in API response. So this is telling us what the fields are here in the JSON object. So here's a model of it. It's got coordinates, weather. These are all the same properties that we're seeing here, even though they're in a different order. It's got main with temp, feels like, temp min, temp max, pressure, humidity, right? So they're all there. And then if we go through this and we look for icon, XML, there's the XML response. XML is like an alternative, so you can use that instead of JSON if you want. Um, I'm looking for the icon. So there's the mode, units, tells us about the units, multilingual support. Um, there's all the languages. Um, where? I'm gonna, I know it's in here somewhere. Maybe it's on another page. Shoot, I thought it was here. Let me see if I can find it. Let's do, let's actually Google for it, right? Let's do Google. Um, open weather map API icons. Yeah, I'm not the only one searching for that, right? Weather conditions. So yeah, so let's go here and, oh yeah, so here's the table. I don't know where I, like, I thought it would have been on that other page. Anyway. Here's the weather icons, and it shows you here weather, and then it's got icon, and the name will be something like 10N, right? You know, what does that mean, right? But if we look here on the list, it'll show you. So it'll say day icons are all D, and then N icons are night, okay? So 4D is day icon, looks like cloudy. 4N is like cloudy at night. Okay, and they give you some icons here. I think you can even use these images. I think they have a URL for these somewhere, or you can replace them with your own pictures, right? So, um, so anyway, so that's a challenge too, is maybe put a picture right here that shows you an icon, you know, that describes the weather data. And actually, while we're talking about that, um, there is a font you can use for this um, weather font. There's a couple actually. Oops, wait, I don't wanna go to weather, I want weather font, right? So um, let's see here. There's a couple that you can find. Um, oh yeah, so Font Awesome has a bunch of weather icons. So here's the weather icons from Font Awesome. So you could import those. Um, you can go to the font and actually that's a font just named weather. I know that there's a weather, oh yeah, here's the one, weather icons, right? So, um, so you could use this. To use this font, you'll have to, um, you know, download and install it, right? If you use the um, Font Awesome, you'll have to install Font Awesome, or actually, you don't really install, but you have to, you have to link it at the top of your page, right? Follow their instructions, right? You go to the start page here. Um, some of the icons in Font Awesome are marked Pro, and you can't use them. So this one you can use. These are Pro. You can't use them. You can use this one. So they just give you like the basic ones, right? But there's enough there, I think, to cover most situations, okay? I like this meteor. <laughs> I wonder if that's a if that's a possibility. Can we does it say meteor on the list? You know, um, I guess they don't have it here on Open Weather Map. But anyway, so um, hopefully that's useful. Um, there's a challenge for you, you know, um, display some different information, try and display the weather as an icon.